This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Adobe Illustrator is actually jam-packed with brushes. I think it's strawberry jam, actually, because I like strawberry jam. Open up the brushes panel. It's right over here if you're in Essentials. If not, go to the word Window and get it. We're going to drag that out so we can see what we have. Incidentally, I am in a brand new document. Just go ahead and open up a blank document, File New. That way we all start on the same page and we don't have much to start with, to be honest with you. We got a basic brush, a couple of things down here. We got some circles down here and a scatter. So we got some basic stuff. How do you make your own brushes? Because no matter what you do, like I said, we're jam packed here. You got a lot of stuff here. All kinds of brushes, artistics and borders and bristles, all kinds of stuff. How do I make my own brushes? Well, start out by clicking this button right here. And that, of course, is your options to go new brush. You have three options that we can do right here and two that require us have something selected. So let's start with calligraphic. If we click OK, we get to make a calligraphic brush. Now, most calligraphic brushes are kind of like ovals, maybe like this. And we can use these options here to change it. Or we can use the numbers down here. Maybe you want a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, up to you. You can change it from a fixed angle, roundness, or size to something else like random. If you use a drawing tablet like I do, you could go to pressure or whatever. Let's leave those at fixed and click OK. And there's our first brush. So if we come over here and pick up a brush tool, paintbrush, and begin working with it, as you can see, it performs just like a typical calligraphic brush. And that's what it's designed to do, create calligraphy. So if you're really good with handwriting and stuff like that, you can use these calligraphic brushes. But I would recommend a drawing tablet. That would really help. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. Let's come back up here again and go down to new brush one more time. Bristle brush. That's kind of hard to say. Click OK. Now in a bristle brush, you have a shape. And you got all these different ones. I use fan brushes a lot in painting. So let's do a fan brush. Let's make the size a little bit bigger. You can see right here what it's going to do. We have a bristle length. We have a density. And you can see I'm kind of thinning it out. We have a thickness. Opacity, and that is true opacity, and stiffness of the brush, and click OK. And there it is. It's already selected. And I come over here, I can paint with my new bristle brush. Now, what I love about this is kind of cool. I use programs like Painter, which is a raster painting program. We're dealing with vector shapes here, yet they emulate visibly everything that is all about raster. I think it's kind of neat. Let's go ahead and get rid of it. Back up here again. Go into New Brush and go down to Pattern Brush. But for a pattern brush, you need some patterns. So let's stop before we do this. If we go into our swatches, we have a couple of patterns already here. This would be easier if I do it this way. Let me go ahead and go over to my Polygon tool. And let me draw and make a polygon here. And let me make a star. Two very distinct different shapes say like that. Let's go ahead and give each one of those a different color. Now I'm going to make these into patterns. Start out with the first one and select it. Go up to the word object and go down to pattern. We've already talked about patterns and making them. It's pretty cool. But I don't need to change anything. I don't need to worry about what's going on over here. I've got the pattern right there. That's what I want. So I'm going to cancel out of here. It's already there. And click this button here to get out of the pattern creator. Let's do the same thing with the star. Object, pattern, make. And again, it's over there now. Don't have to do anything. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here and close out of the pattern editor. And let's move these guys up to the corner for a second. And let me put them a little bit closer together. And because we're going to use these again, I'm going to make a copy of this so we have a couple of things going on here. And forget they're up there for now. Let's come back over here again and click New Brush, Pattern. Now the patterns we have are here. You have Alicia and Jive and Original, which are these right here. These are our new ones, and they're Pattern and Pattern 2. We didn't give them names, but we know what they are. This is what we decide where the patterns are applied. And this is where it can get kind of fun, too. This is the path of any stroke or whatever you do. 
And I want that to be one of these two, like maybe, um, oh, let's do new pattern on that one. Now these are the corners of a closed shape. If I click here, maybe we'll make those pattern two, which is the star. So this will give you an idea of what's happening here. Let's go ahead and say we like that, click OK. Come over here and maybe pick up the polygon. Let me draw a nice big polygon here for you. And let's go ahead and select this right here. See what it did? It put the stars on the corners and the path got the polygons. That's how this works. Now you have more areas. If you double click here, you can say, what do you want on the inside corners, the inside paths, or on the ends? That's how these patterns work, but you probably want to make yourself some patterns so you can apply them to the pattern brush. So we're using patterns to make a pattern brush. Let's go ahead and get out of here. And let's go ahead and get rid of that. The other two that we have require something to be selected. So let's start with this stuff up here. As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and make one of these a different, brighter color. Don't have to, but we will. Select them, all four. Go back up to this button right here and go down to New Brush. Actually, go over to New Brush, sorry. We now have the ability to do a scatter or an art. Let's do a scatter first and click OK. Now there's the stuff that's going to be scattered. We can change the size, the spacing, the scatter itself, and the rotation. The rotation can be relative to a page or the path itself, up to you. We can change the colorization method into tints, shades, and use. And then we can use a key color down here if you want to. Let's just click OK for now. If I pick up my brush again and go ahead and do a little bit of work here, it's scattering it. That's what it's designed to do. Now let's leave that selected and come back in here. Turn on preview, make sure that's on, and now we can play. Come over here and maybe try the different size. We can try the spacing. The scatter itself, which will go one side or the other. I usually want it on the line, so I like to leave that one at zero. And rotation. You want it to the page or to the path? You like what you see? Now you're controlling it by visual. Click OK. You've just made yourself a nice brush. It's going to say, do you want to apply it down here? We'll say, go ahead and apply it. There you go. Now the last one. I'm going to use the same shapes so you can get an idea of what's going on here. Let's go ahead and select them. Let's go one more time over here and go into new. And this time it's going to be an art brush. Click OK. When you're working with an art brush, you're using a shape. You can decide, in our case, four, but you can decide whether it scales proportionately, it stretches to fit the stroke length. Now that's the default, so we're going to leave that alone. Or you can stretch it between two defined guides that you would define down here. You can have it go up, down, left or right, down the path, change the colorization. We can flip it along the vertical or horizontal axis, or we can have it even overlap if that's what we want to do. Let's leave everything alone and click OK. There it is. Now let me come out here and unselect our shapes because it'll change those if they're selected. Let's pick up our paintbrush and let's pick up our art brush and watch what happens to it. It stretches it to fit the length that I drew. If I go very small like that, it's a little bit more natural. That's what an art brush does. But if we leave that selected, actually, let's do this one up here. Let's select this one. Double click it over here. Now we can scale proportionately, like whoa. We can put it and stretch it between guides that we define. It's up to us. But that's basically an art brush. Now, what I would recommend that you do to get an idea of what goes on here is click here and go into things like artistic and look at things like artistic paintbrushes. You got all these different brushes. Now that's still selected. These are art brushes, but see how it stretches to fit that line. So this was made independently as probably a very small piece. And now it stretches based on how far I go. Now there's one other way you can use these that are kind of fun. Let me do a control A delete. If you have something like an image and you want to put a really cool border around it. So you have a photograph right here pick up your rectangle tool, and you draw a rectangle that fits around the photograph. You can then click on something like this and create these really cool borders that go around the photo. 
That's kind of fun to play around with too. It's up to you. So what do we got? Well, if we come back up here again, we have calligraphics, scatters, arts, bristle, and patterns. We can use the ones we have, or we can even make our own. Up to you. On to the next.